He is a ISU master, a recent graduate, and director of partnerships at Uris Knight. And the title of her presentation is No Borders, Bridging Cultures Through Uris Knight. Thank you. Um, I'm going to be replacing Stephanie, who was originally going to be here today, so hopefully I will um, do justice to her presentation and the paper that you guys can find on the CD. So I'm with Gary Knight, as stated, and we are all about bridging cultures, so that's why we, we pushed into the internationalism for this paper. Um, Jeffrey Alds is our director of operations, so he was lead on this. Getting a little bit into why your site even exists, and then I'll explain about what it is, and you'll see the, the change from the history that we're basing off of to why we're now an organization. So April 12th, 1961, is when Yuri Zarin made his first flight. So the first man in space, something we're all very familiar with. And then, exactly 20 years later, a little bit by accident, because there was a bit of schedule slippage, we had the first um, space shuttle flight. So April 12th of 1981. It was pretty nice that that happened on the same day. So first we have a huge milestone happening in the Soviet Union, and then we have another fairly significant milestone um, happening in the US. And it was nice that that was the same day. And then we're including ourselves in the third milestone here that 20 years later again, uh, 2001, April 12th, was the very first year of science. So this is a bit more of a cultural milestone. Those are very technical ones. And this happened because there were a few people that were noticing those similarities, the big achievements, and saying, why don't we celebrate this? We, as humans, we really like to celebrate things. We like to have parties. I'm sure you've noticed that this week that you had four full days of a lot of work and then four probably equally full nights of parties that complemented it. Um, it's, it's just in our nature. And so we have a lot of different events throughout the year in all of our countries that celebrate different aspects of life. So we have Mother's Day, we have Earth Day, we have Valentine's Day. All of these different focuses of things that are important to us. So we thought space is important to us as engineers and scientists, but it's also important to everyday people, people who are accountants, people who are teachers, who don't necessarily focus on space like we do, but still enjoy it, enjoy the ideas, enjoy the potential that could come from space exploration. And so that's what Yuri Sign is. It is trying to give an opportunity for people all around the world to step away from their normal lives and focus on space for one day. Um, a little bit of like St. Patrick's Day. I'm American, and in the US, St. Patrick's Day is a fairly significant holiday. People are very excited when it comes around in March. We're not Irish, but we still enjoy celebrating it. So people who aren't in space can still enjoy celebrating space, and so Yuri's Night is an opportunity to do that. So this is a picture from our first year. We had 64 parties the first year in 24 countries, which was a good start. And here we're looking at what is your site. This is another aspect. So I was just chatting about the celebration, but education goes along with that. That's a lot of what we're talking about in this session today. So it's an international celebration of human space flight. And a question that we get a lot in the States something that came up even last year, CNN did coverage of Yuri's night, and it's noticing that it wasn't a big holiday in the US, they thought, because we're celebrating um, a cosmonaut from the Soviet Union. Why would we celebrate that in America? Uh, but really, we're focusing on the fact that space is international. One of the first comments that Yuri made from his capsule was about the Earth being an entire single planet. There weren't all these divisions that he could see. And astronauts after astronauts have made very similar comments over the years. So we wanted to focus on the fact that space was something that could unite us. So we can celebrate any achievement in space, no matter who makes it, no matter why it happened, what the rationale for it was, but that there is all the work and effort and passion that goes into making space happen. And so that's what your design is. So here we're educating students. They're building rockets out of paper. Um, and so we have four teams that make this happen. Uh, Yuri's Night is something that's very grassroots. We encourage people to host parties in their own countries. Sometimes those are friends gathering in a backyard or watching a space movie, 10 people. Uh, NASA Ames did an event with thousands of people. Frankfurt did an event with thousands of people a few years ago as well. So there are a lot of different formats for that. And so it's very grassroots. Eventually, we would like it to be something where we don't have to organize much at all, uh, trying to put ourselves out of business and there are a few other space organizations that are like that as well. Um, but for the moment, we're trying to push that, put that push in to get people to know 
that this is something they could celebrate. So we have general operations, we have an outreach team that has people from across the world. So it is largely based in the US, um, just because that's where it started, but we're trying to push out and we have representatives on all the other continents. This past year, we actually had a huge number of events in Iran because we had a woman from Iran who's very passionate who became involved. And then we do a lot of social media. Um, there was a session this afternoon on social media we were going to present in, and then we have a digital team as well because most of our outreach is digital. Sorry. Um, show you some of these pictures. So this is 2011. Uh, Ron Guerin there in the back was a huge supporter, and so we had a direct downlink conversation with the space station, uh, with the astronauts who were there at the time for the 50th anniversary. So that was our biggest year, was the 50th anniversary. And since then, we've also been growing. Here we have, again have one of our, our pins that Ron Guerin took this photo for us. And then last year was a significant event because we expanded from one planet to two. So Curiosity, the team at JPL, uh, made it possible for us to celebrate Yuri's Night on Mars. And we had a tweet from Curiosity uh, that got a lot more interest because of all the followers on Twitter there. So using social media um, and also our robotic exploration to expand this passion for space flight. And then similar here. So we see this is the event from the Curiosity landing on Times Square, if you followed that at all, uh, that there was a huge group that was gathering to watch it on the big screen there. Yuri's Night is April 12th. That's, that's once a year. And so one thing that we struggle with is making the outreach happen throughout the entire year. And part of balancing that out is through our partnerships. And so we're partners with a lot of other space organizations and this event was through our Get Curious. So Get Curious, we worked with um, Explore Mars. Uh, we also, um, there are a few other groups involved in that campaign to organize events to celebrate the landing. Oh, sorry, the mouse is on the bottom. That's why I'm not forwarding this. Uh, a lot of other events to celebrate the landing on, of Curiosity on Mars. So that's a way to get more involvement in August or events that are happening later in the fall. Um, here we can see a tweet up that was in Edmonton that was one of our more educational events. Last year there was a lot of buy-in from CSA about celebrating Yuri Stein, especially because Chris Hatfield was commander of the space station at the time, and so he was able to give us some participation there, and really spreading out who's being impacted by this. So these were, this was 500 students. Um, this was K-12, so they were a bit younger, and getting them more excited about space at an early age. This is the event at NASA Ames from a few years ago. They ended up dividing between a few days, so they had a day of education events and then a day of parties. And so this is clearly from the party event. There was a lot of music and a lot of action going on there. Second Life is another opportunity for us to work internationally, so people who are using um, digital platforms and want to celebrate that way, so connecting with people on different, different parts of the world, different parts of their country, to celebrate if they can't go to a direct party. Uh, and then the rest of these are just examples of how we can spread across the world. So parties in Colombia, um, this was in California last year after Endeavor had been delivered. Japan, um, the Google and Rx Prize teams are required to do outreach. And so an avenue they found very successful to do that is through Yuri Science, that that can qualify for some of the outreach requirements that they have from GLXP. Scotland, this is one of the educational events you can see. Cocoa Beach, Florida, so, and Brian actually, a um, gentleman bottom photo, is our executive director. He's been very involved in Yuri's night. In Turkey, there were events. Russia, of course, is very successful. Austria, and so here's the video greeting we had from Chris Hadfield last year. And then on the side, we see LeVar Burton, so uh, Star Trek actor, also reading Rainbow Star, for some of you who might have seen that as a child. And this was a new campaign we did last year and we're trying to get the public more involved in this and then using digital ways to distribute photos. So this next slide, we can see a few people. We have Soyan Yi, we have uh, astronaut Scott Karzinski. This was taken at the top of Mount Everest. He climbed that successfully and took one of our patches up. Uh, Anusha Ansari. So this is a campaign about where Yuri's night can show up. Uh, transitioning from my other life, a lot of Magazines will say, where did you take your magazine on vacation? And that's a very exciting way to do outreach for them. We're trying to do that with Yuri's Night, that it can show up anywhere. So from the top of Mount Everest to um, <coughs> have scuba divers take it under the ocean um, to show that and make it more of a general thing that you see. Uh, so we tried to have a basic logo. That's another big part of our outreach is that it's easy to see and recognize. 
And then the other main thing that we do as the executive team is we track where we have events. Um, so this is our one of our maps. Uh, we always have a line on the website. So you can see where there have been events registered each year. And these are only the ones where people officially register them on the website, which is easy and free, not absolutely required. Um, and again, eventually something will probably transition away from as it's more ingrained and settled in society. <coughs> You can see there's been a lot of growth, 350 events last year. Our biggest year was still 2011 because it was the 50th anniversary of human spaceflight, but since then we've again been increasing the number of events as well as the distribution. So we equally look to how many people are celebrating as to where people are celebrating. And we're always trying to find those countries that we don't see something happening in and try and find locals who are there on the scene who are interested in space to try and activate their own communities because that's much more successful than a top-down approach. So it's very much from the bottom to move into communities and really get the buy-in from locals. Uh, so here, there is an opportunity for China, since we're here, to push some more events. So now that I have a few Chinese friends, I think we're going to increase uh, the representation there. Uh, this is just a word cloud that we came up with for different words associated with Yuri's Night. And then moving into the future, uh, we've had over the past few years different competitions, ways to try and involve different populations. So art is one of those. We had a video contest a few years ago and a poster design contest of ways to have more visual representation and activate communities that wouldn't necessarily be space interested to start with. Because that's really the point. It's great that we can do outreach to other people who are involved in space, who are interested in space, but we want to push beyond that to those who don't do space in their everyday lives. So more educational outreach as well is associated with this. We partner with a few other groups that do K-12. Um, so I guess that's American system, but that's five years old to 18 years old. Educational level, formal and informal partnership, and then working with popular culture. So we were able to get some exposure on Big Bang Theory a few years back. Uh, we had our postcard on Raj's fridge in one of the scenes, so we were pretty excited about that. Yes, of course, they're very space interested, but it's a little bit to how Yuri's Night can find its way into normal society and increase interaction with those people who don't do space for their jobs. Um, so again, you can celebrate Yuri's Night this year. This is just a general invitation. Um, but thank you very much for uh, listening to my presentation. And if you have any questions, I can answer them or I can direct you to Jeffrey, who wrote the paper um, as well. Thank you. We have time for questions. So let me start with one question. Okay. Uh, I wanted to understand if uh, a better indicator than the number of events could be the number of participants in the events. I mean, you could have a lot of very small events with few participants or one huge event with a lot of participants. Do you keep track of these numbers? Yes, that's something that we try and keep track of. So we have uh, what we call our Mission Control Center, and for that, that's how people register their events. So they'll say where it's happening, and if it's public or private. So for instance, I've had events just at my apartment, so not inviting the general public, but if you're having a public event at a museum or a science center, uh, you can make that available on the website, and then people, if I'm, for instance, in DC and I want to go somewhere, I can look up where it is. In that, you also include an estimated attendance, and then you can update it afterwards with the real attendance. And we do track those numbers, and we do have those numbers in the paper. An issue with that is the accuracy of estimating those numbers, and then the number of people who update them afterwards, which is not very many. Uh, just because it's an extra step that's not needed, so it depends on the person who's organizing the event if they want to actually go back into the system to do it. We do, though, yes, try and track that event. Um, and we also try and have live, documentation in a sense from events where we have a website set up called Yuri's Night Live where people can submit photos directly so that also gives us an indication as to the size of the event what we see there yes one question I come from Ethiopia mm -hmm. and I learned about Yuri's Night through Space Generation Advisory Council just to let you know that we've been celebrating Yuri's Night for three years or four years straight. 
we haven't registered it for different reasons. Right. But it's, I thought it was uh, a very good idea to communicate, to engage students or people who are not related to space science. So it helps a lot to bring people together and just for their information. That's great to hear. I'm glad to hear you're celebrating in Ethiopia. Uh, and yes, and it's also mentioned in our paper, but SJC, which is how you learned about it, is how Yuri Science started. So we were originally a project of SJC, and then it kept growing so much that we reached the point where we separated and became our own nonprofit. Um, but then with that took a lot of the values of the internationalism that SJC brings people from around the world together and we're still doing that, trying to do that with our executive team and then who's celebrating. Uh, like, yeah, the t-shirts that we have and all the photos. Uh, we do have a store on our website. Um, also, I have some stickers in my bag in the back if anyone would like a sticker, but I didn't carry around the big t-shirts all the way to China. <laughs> Luggage limits and all. So. Um, what kind of support do you provide to the regional uh, organizers? Eurosite is an entirely volunteer organization. Um, so everyone on the team is volunteering their time, and we do a lot of that through telecons. We do provide some support depending on um, if people need help to call in. We try and do a lot of it over the internet, but then we can provide some support for that because we do have some donations, uh, like personal donations, and then our two biggest financial sponsors, the Musk Foundation, so Elon Musk, and then also Richard Garriott. Uh, so we do have some support there. Um, and then just trying to stay connected with them. We also provide information as to how to hold an event, which is helpful for organizers. So we provide media information that they can give to their local newspaper, or something that if you have a science center in your city, where you can take a few, like two pages, to present to that science center as an introduction to what your site is, which is helpful for them because a lot of times when you're approached to host an event, it's a little bit almost standoffish that. There's already a lot going on, no matter where you are, which center you're at, um, or if there's a bar. Um, so having something basic to provide to people. So that's what we give to our regional organizers. And then also people who just want to host parties. Uh, we have educational lessons designed. Teachers are very busy, so it's often difficult for them to do new lesson plans, so we can provide those as well. Um, and that's all free on our website. And that's another thing that we're using our partnerships to do, is generate material like that so that can support party hosts. One last question, yes. I just wanted to throw it out there as a best practice that I was one of the organizers at the 2007-2008 AIMS events, and for things like that, uh, we wouldn't have been able to get 4,000, 8,000 people just from Space Geeks, even though we're in Silicon Valley, even though you know it's a pretty geeky area of the world. Um, we did a huge partnership with the uh, electronic music and the Burning Man communities in the Bay Area. Uh, and that really helped us reach outside of our course, Space Geek, and you know, it's easy enough to get Google over, but getting these San Francisco art people that don't have cars to come out and you know, learn about space and present their giant room and <coughs> stuff like that, that's pairing with other communities, and I think that that was a really good kind of best practice thing. Yeah, thank you, that's very true. Uh, another thing is where you host it, as to getting other communities involved. The first year night in LA, uh, was hosted at a club downtown. So it was this combination of space people who went because they knew it was a space event and just the normal LA club scene who went because it was a club. And so that was a, a good mix of people and the clubbers were actually pretty excited about the space theme that was there. So another opportunity. Thank you. Thank you.